everyone, welcome back. And today we're going to look at fractions and take a couple fractions and compare them, see which one is bigger, which one's smaller. And so I got a little brain warmer here. I have two children going through their piggy banks. One girl saying I have three quarters of a dollar, and the boy saying I have three fifths of a dollar. Who has more money? And how do you know? All right, we're going to look at four strategies to compare and order fractions, and that's going to be looking at something called paper strips, fraction circles, number line, and my recommended method is equivalent fractions. Um, let's get started right away with paper strips. So if I wanted to order three quarters, three fifths, and five eighths from least to greatest, we would fold or measure, then color, equal strips of paper. And so the key here is you need equal strips of paper and then you'd have to divide it into that many parts and so you can see here that this could work but there might be a lot of measuring and such but um, just looking at these three fractions though which one is the smallest okay and so looking at the red here three-fifths is indeed the smallest it has not gone as far to the right five-eighths is closely next and then three quarters and so even though three quarters has the lowest you know the digits are lowest there that's actually the biggest fraction so from least to greatest and that's important when you are asked this stuff look at the what you're being asked to do least to greatest three fifths five eighths and three quarters now I'm gonna get you to visually try this one uh, I have three fractions here and I do have some paper strips you know electronically um, displayed here and so you might you might figure out who you know which parts go with which parts but um, I like you to just visually try this try and figure out from least to greatest which is smallest two-fifths three-eighths or two-thirds so I'll get you to pause that for a sec just mentally colored in with your finger and then press play when you're ready to go on all right so we need to count equal parts here um, the first one is dealing with the fifths okay five equal parts um, the second one is dealing with the eights and the thirds is going to the third one here so I'm gonna color in two fifths okay and then I'm gonna color in three eights and then I'm gonna color in two thirds and so from least to greatest you can see that the least is the three eights and then next is two fifths. And then lastly, two thirds is actually the largest fraction. Now, looking at something called fraction circles, um, this is my pizza pie method here. Um, there's a website here if you want to look it up, visualfractions.com slash teachers slash compare circles. Um, we can visually look at fraction circles and how they can compare. So if I wanted to compare um uh, let's see here two thirds versus five eighths let's say i can i can convert you know two thirds and five eighths which one would be larger how about you take a guess before i press the okay button what is gonna be larger two thirds or five eighths well it's divided up into equal parts here and so it's showing me that two thirds is actually larger than 5 eighths. That's the greater than sign there. It's pointing to the left. Um, you might notice that they changed the fractions to out of 24. And we're going to talk about that a little bit in a sec. Um, it has to do with the equivalent fractions, um, but 2 thirds. Uh, let's do one more. Let's do, how about 1 quarter versus 3 tenths. You take a guess, which one's gonna be larger, one quarter or three tenths? It looks like three tenths is larger, just slightly larger than one quarter. So using fraction circles, you can, I guess, again, see which one is larger. Uh, I, it's not always gonna be the easiest strategy because, I mean, visually you can see it, but it's a lot of drawing and making sure that you have equal pieces because equal pieces is what has to happen in order to make a fraction. 
Another strategy is something called number lines. And so please remember a fraction is a parts of a whole. So what I'm saying here is that this is the zero and this is a whole. Okay, we're talking about one thing. And so if I was to compare one half, three quarters, one quarter and five eighths from least to greatest, I could draw this number line. Um, if you're gonna do this strategy, it's an, you do have to know how to do equivalent fractions because um, all these denominators aren't necessarily the same. And so we would have to make equivalent fractions out of some of these. So you always wanna look for the one that has the highest digit for denominator and that is the eighths. And so all of these are gonna become eighths. So this is one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, and seven eighths, and then one would be eight eighths. Um, you can see that five eighths would go here. So I've taken care of that guy. But the other ones in halves or quarters, well, I gotta think, how can I get from one half to out of eight? And so we did some, some work in the last video about how to convert this into equivalent fractions. So remember, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. If I'm gonna get the two to an eight, I have to multiply by four. So that must mean that the four here, um, the numerator is a four, and so one half is technically this guy. So this is one half, and so we've taken care of that guy. Uh, we got three quarters and one quarter. So both of those end in um, denominator four. So let's do the one quarter. I need to get that to eight. Um, this time I'm gonna multiply by two. Two eighths is, um, is actually one quarter. And that must mean that six eighths is three quarters. I'll put three quarters here. So from least to greatest, we have one quarter, one half, five eighths, and three quarters. That's the order from least to greatest. Again, the key here is you know, equivalent fractions, making sure that they all fit on the number line. This strategy is not going to work very well if you have some fractions that are very odd, like sevenths or sixths, or, you know, it, it might do a lot more math. But uh, again, I'm kind of foreshadowing to the equivalent fraction um, recommended portion coming up here. But I'm going to get you to try this one. I have a blank number line, and you could just draw a line at home. And I'd like you to order this from least to greatest. Um, press pause, come back when you're ready. All right, so remember this is zero and this is one, and I have to make this uh, into six because six is what we got there. So I have to make six equal pieces. Uh, I'm gonna do my best. So halfway would be, uh, halfway to three is three six, would you agree? And so I need to divide this maybe into two equal pieces. So that's one six, two six, and I need to do this approximately there again. That's four, six, and five, six. And so I already have one taken care of, and that was one, six. There's one, six right there. Probably gonna bet that's gonna be the lowest one on the on the what we're doing here. Um, we do have four, six. We can take care of that guy right now. But we have to convert the two thirds and the one third. So one third, I have to get that to six. How do I get that three to a six? I multiply by two. That means I have to do the numerator by two, so one third actually equals two six. So here is one third. And then I have to do two thirds. And again, I have to get that to a six multiplied by two, and that becomes four six. So actually, two thirds and four six are the same thing. You can put that in there. So, two thirds. So from least to greatest here, I have one six. I have one third, and then it's kind of a tie between two thirds and four six. Um, kind of put that in brackets there. Again, there's another website, the same kind of website. You can kind of see what's going on a little bit better if you are more of a visual learner. Um, I could put, hey, what's um, one half compared to two thirds? What do you think? Which one's bigger, two thirds or one half? And it looks like two thirds is larger than one half. So 
if you're interested in that website, uh, it's at the top there, visualfractions.com slash teacher slash compare lines. All right, the last method, and this is the one I recommend, um, is to compare two things and then s list equivalent fractions until either the numerator or the denominator is the same. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to, and please, I don't know if you've heard me say this, but on the smart board, I can't write um, a fraction, proper fraction. So, so I kind of got that two slash three. So it's actually looking that way. Um, to list equivalent fractions, uh, I recommend we just multiply. Um, and so I'm going to take two thirds and I'm going to multiply it by, by two, by three, by four, by five, maybe up to six. And we're trying to get either the numerator or the denominator to be the same. And so I kind of want you to forget everything I've said so far. I, you probably should have fast forward to this point. Um, but for the visual learners, I wanted to, to show you what paper strips, number lines, and fraction circles look like. This is the quickest method though. So I'm going to multiply by two first. I don't need to multiply by one because it's going to be two thirds. So remember when I multiply by two, that's top and bottom, numerator and denominator. So two thirds, um, two times two is four and three times two is six. So four six. And if I do three fifths, three times two is six and five times two is 10. Now, do I have any numerators the same? I have a four and a six, they're not the same. Do I have any denominators the same? I have a six and a 10, no, they're not the same. So let's go by three now. Um, two times three is six and three times three is nine. And then I have three times three is nine. And I also have five times three is 15. Now I have four fractions here. Do I have any numerators or denominators the same? I have four. So four numerators are four, six, six, nine. <gasps> I do have two the same, and that is these two guys. So I'm gonna pull these guys out, six ninths versus six tenths. Now I need you to use your imagination here. Imagine a pizza, I've mentioned pizza is really great, um, very tasty. Um, but if you look at a pizza, and remember the denominator is talking about how many pieces it's divided into. If I have 10 equal pieces versus nine equal pieces, which one is larger, a tenth or a ninth? Um, maybe a little bit more easier example is if you had a pizza that was divided into four pieces and the same pizza is divided into eight pieces, um, which one would be bigger? The four. And so um, you need to know that the lower the digit, this is kind of backwards in, in thinking, the lower the digit, the bigger the piece. It's because the nine is lower than the 10, this guy is the larger fraction because there is nine equal pieces versus 10 equal pieces. And remember, we're describing one whole here. And so let's take this information, six ninths versus six tenths. I'm going to go back to the fraction um, bar here and I'm going to put that in six ninths versus six tenths, oops. And you're gonna see that the six ninths is larger. And the reason it's larger is because there's less pieces. Um, there's nine equal pieces versus 10 equal pieces. And if you don't really understand that, just take my word for it, how about that? Um, so I'm gonna get you to try one here. I'd like you to compare two sixths and three eighths. I want you to list equivalent fractions, um, multiply the, t the numerator and the denominator, the top and bottom by the same number until you have either a numerator the same or denominator the same. Pause, come back when you're ready. Okay, I feel the obligation to rewrite these. So we're talking about two six versus three eighths. Let's multiply by two. Two times two is four. Six times two is 12 versus three times two is six and eight times two is 16. Now I should have mentioned that um, these 
original fractions do count as well. You can compare those. So I do have a 2, a 4, a 3, and a 6 as numerators. None of, none of those are the same. And I have a 6, a 12, an 8, and a 16. And then those denominators are not the same. So let's multiply by 3 here. Um, I like to organize these in columns. It helps me see what's going on a little bit easier. We always need to multiply by the original fraction. Do not multiply the times 2 guy. It's not going to be equivalent. We're always going by the original. So 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 times 3 is 18 and then I have 3 times 3 is 9 and 8 times 3 is 24. All right so let's count numerators. I have a 2, a 4, a 6, a 3, a 6, and a 9. Aha! Here I go again. I have a 6 and 16 versus a 6 and uh, 6 eighteenths. I don't have any denominators the same, so I'm going to go with this. I have 6 sixteenths versus 6 eighteenths, and I just said the lower digit is the larger fraction, so 6 sixteenths is larger than 6 eighteenths, so we can say that 2 six, sorry, 3 eighths is larger than 2 six. We have to go back to the original fraction, 3 eighths is larger than 2 6. All right, there you have it. So we've been looking at how to compare and order fractions. Um, you're given two fractions that don't have the same denominator or don't have the same numerator. It's really hard to compare them without drawing a picture. Now you can draw a picture. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is making sure that you have equal pieces because that's what fractions are. They're things that are divided up into equal pieces. And if you can't freehand a circle and divide them in equal pieces, it's not going to work out. So I'm trying to describe to you that this equivalent fraction method is the most effective method because you don't have to do any drawing. Um, the secret here though is multiplying, is multiplying the numerator and denominator of both fractions by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Keep going. Now, in both my examples, we ended at 3 times 3, but it's possible to keep going times 4 and until we get something working out. So I'm looking at all the numerators, comparing them. It would have been nice if the denom or the denominators, it would have been easier to see if a denominator, sorry my examples didn't show that. For example, if I all of a sudden had 6 twelfths versus 4 twelfths, we could definitely see that this is larger because the numerator is larger. So, there you go. And please remember, in life, math happens. Take care.